Okay, this is going to be a demo of how to take uh, take a FileMaker database file uh, that is fairly large in size, uh, and we want to split it out into multiple files, uh, two or more, uh, that together are going to be roughly the same size, but where each one of those new files itself is going to be uh, smaller than the original size. Uh, so why, why might we want to do this? Um, in general, with FileMaker, as, as a file gets too big in size, it can become uh, unwieldy to, to sort of to manage. Uh, there are certain things that, that can become more difficult to do. Uh, backups can take longer. Uh, the data migration tool can take longer to run. And I think it's fair to say that generally there's more risk of corruption with, uh, with the larger file. Uh, I don't know what that threshold is exactly, but you know, for me as a rule of thumb, if it's, if it's a gigabyte or more, uh, that's where I, I start to get a little nervous. Uh, so one, one strategy, one approach to, to getting the file size to, to be decreased would be to uh, identify um, one or more tables in the file uh, that is responsible for a big portion of the file size, and then move that table out into its own file. So that's what this demo is going to is going to show. So in our case here, um, we have this huge table here that we want to move out. Uh, first, we'll create some test records up here. We see it's zero count right now, but we're going to going to change that shortly. So let's create. Uh, let's see, we have sixteen hundred records right now. Um, so if I close this file, we'll see that. This is now 20 megabytes. Let's just pretend that that's a much bigger number. Uh, we're now going to use the developer utilities to create a copy of this file uh, with a new name. So we're going to call this huge table file, and we'll save it to the same folder. And there it is. So at this point, these two files are identical, except that they have different names. I'm going to open the new file here. And uh, the next thing I will do is go and uh, we want to delete these tables here. These, these are tables that we don't want to keep in the new file. We're going to keep this one. But before I do that, I'm just going to switch over to the relationships tab. And we can see here that the table that we're going to keep in this file actually has a reference or a relationship to this table. And that might be because there is an unstored calc in this table that is referring to something in here or something along those lines. And so if we need to be able to keep this uh, relationship in this file, we don't want to get rid of this table occurrence. What we want to do instead is to repoint this table occurrence to the original file. So I'm going to add a new FileMaker data source here to that original file. And I'm going to pick this table so that it matches what we have here. And when I click OK, you'll see that this goes italics, which indicates that it's pointing to a table at a different file. So at this point, we're going to get rid of these two table occurrences. And we'll do that just by deleting these three tables. And it's going to ask me, it's going to give me a chance to also remove the table occurrences. So I'll do that. So now the tables are not here, and those two table occurrences are not here either. All right. Um, so at this point, we could also go in and delete all the scripts in the, in the file. I'm, I'm going to keep this one around. I'll come back to it later and explain why I'm doing that. But I'll just get rid of those other scripts. And we can also go and delete the, uh, the, uh, the, tab the layouts that we no longer need. So I'll do that as well. OK, so this new file is essentially going to be a data file, meaning that it's not a file that we want users accessing. So what we could do is create, uh, real quick, we could create a, a blank table. It doesn't have any fields. And we'll create a layout called file open that uses that blank layout. And we will set this file in the file options to open to that layout, or yeah, to that file open layout. And we probably want to do a couple other things to sort of harden this to make sure that users aren't able to bypass uh, this layout. But essentially, um, you know, we would kind of, we would, you know, let the users know that, hey, hey, if you've somehow stumbled upon this file, um, uh, you know, it's not intended for, for you to be accessing. So we could just kind of do something simple like, like this just hide the, the window if they click that OK button, something along those lines. OK, so anyways, this, now is, this file is now more or less prepped for what we, what we need. Um, so I'm going to close this file. And now we're going to go back to the original file here. And we will add an external data source to the new file. So there it is. 
And then the next step, uh, and this here is kind of the crux of the, of the technique. We're gonna go to this table occurrence for the table that we moved out, and we will repoint it to the other file. Um, we're pointing it to a table that, that is essentially identical to this table. And so no references to this table should break. Everything should just work, right? This is italics now, meaning that it's coming from a different file. But any scripts that reference this table, uh, any fields that come from this, they used to come from this table should just come from the corresponding fields in the other file, right? Because it's all using the same internal IDs under the hood. Um, so everything should just work. And at this point, if we go to the tables, we can see that there's actually no tables here or two table occurrences that are referencing this table. So we could delete this table now. But before we do that, we do need to make sure that um, if there are any direct references to this table, we want to handle those appropriately. So one example of a direct reference is this right here, truncate. Um, so when we truncate a table, that is not referencing a table occurrence, which is a bit unusual in FileMaker. Usually everything that's referencing a table is doing that through a table occurrence. But in this case, this is referencing directly the table itself. And you can't point this to a, a table in a different file. So what we will do instead is call that script in the other file so that it can truncate the table from over there. And that was why we didn't delete that script in the other file earlier. Uh, but now we can just click this uh, button to run the script and we should see all these, all these records go away. And it's, it's sort of confirming that action with us. Um, there it is, it's all gone. Uh, okay, so now that we've done that, um, and, and by the way, you, you may have seen that that other file open real quick to, um, to truncate the table. Uh, you know, that's easily worked with, worked around, right? We can modify that script in the other table or in the other file um, to prevent uh, prompts to the user or to hide the window after it's done or, you know, whatever we want to do there. So I don't, I don't see that as an issue here. Um, okay, so now we have this file and it's, and it's pointing sort of to the right place. If we create, we can still create those records and they're actually being created in the other file, in this file. So we got 600 here and we can see here that they're actually coming from um, they're coming from this from this place over here. Uh, and so the next step here would be um, to to create a DDR, which I won't do here, but you would create a DDR and then just do a, a, a search in that DDR for any any references to to this huge table just to make sure that there aren't any left. Uh, but once we feel assured that all those references are gone, then we can come in here and we can delete this uh, this uh, this table right here. So at this point, these 1,600 records are going to going to be removed, and this file size is going to go from 20 once I close the file uh, down to uh, down to 300 and some kilobytes. There it is. Um, okay, so now these two files are ready, and uh, so if we've done this in our development environment, when it's time to deploy this to production. Uh, what you would do is you would run the data migration tool uh, so that you migrate the data from the production file uh, into each of these two files. And the way what will happen is that when you run it, when you target this file, or at least a clone of this file, it'll migrate the data for the huge table. And when you target uh, the clone of this file, it'll migrate uh, the data for those three smaller tables. Uh, in each case, you're going to get some errors about missing tables, but that's to be expected because not all the tables are in both of the files anymore. Uh, so that's it. Hope, hopefully uh, you found this helpful.